Okay, so welcome everyone uh, to this UQM seminar. Uh, today we're very happy to have Kantaro Omori from Simon Center for Geometry and Physics telling us about parametrized invertible QFTs from fermions. And before the talk starts, uh, let me just remind everyone that there will be an afterwards gather.com discussion uh, after the talk. All right, so Kantaro, uh, please take it away. Thanks. Uh, thanks for Shuhan for, for introducing and also this is my honor to give the UGM seminar talk. So today I'd like to talk about the parameterized invertible QF QFTs from fermions. And so this will be uh, based on the ongoing work with Ichu Choi, who is a student at Stony Brook University and also largely depends on um, previous papers, uh, including uh, this This is a uh, paper by myself with uh, Yasunori and Yuji Tachikawa and also by others that uh, portion in a couple of Songren and Craig, uh, Cordova Freedom Zyberg. And also I informed that the, the, the Mike Hamele gave a very related talk at CMSA. So you can, uh, yeah, you can uh, find it on YouTube. Okay, so a bit. Okay, so I he, today I'd like to talk about the invertible systems or invertible in particular QFTs. And so and here invertible means that a uh, tensor product of the theory or system with its time reversal is trivial theory, but uh, in practice. But what it means is that the dimension of the system, dimension of the Hilbert space on of a system on any time slice, is is one. Okay, so and and we can approximately uh, use this invert invertible as a synonym or the of the gapped and short range entangled system. Um, okay, so the gap short range, short range entangle system is invertible in, in IL. The converse is not exactly true, but th that minor point it will not be important in this talk. And, and I apologize that I'm going to use the high energy uh, notation that the D, small d means that space time dimension that I found it's very uh, too annoying for me to um, correct to. Uh, the condensed model notation, but in, in the concrete examples, I, I'm going to uh, say that this is one plus one or two plus one dimensions. Okay, so so that's about the invertible systems and the the central theme that unites uh, the both the the condensed matter physicist and and high energy or the QFT physicist in recent years is that this invertible systems or the gapped short range entangled SPT phases are classified by a suitable generalized cohomology theory. So the, okay, so the, the recent um, important and great development is that we understand the classification of such and and these invertible systems is important in condensed matter side because it is the um, I mean the IL the classifies the IL behavior or phases of, of the, the symmetry protected um, physics and also high energy side it also captures the anomaly of the QFTs. Okay. Okay. So so in this talk I write down. On um, the classification of invertible theories, like by this notation that inf of d d is a space and dimension, and this ballot is denotes. Well, I'm going to talk about the spin case. So, so in that case, uh, means the the theory contains the fermions. Okay. Okay, and such um, SPT phase is classified by a generalized homogeneity theory, precisely the 
so-called Anderson duo of uh, the cobolism, which I'm, I'm, I'm not going to um, explain um, in detail, but there's there's um, precise precise mathematical concept that uh, classifies the SPT phase or invertible systems. Okay. Okay. So that's and, and that forms a generalized generalized cohomology theory, which is a, a kind of a generalization of, of usual ordinary cohomology theory. Okay. And yeah, I skipped on some deal. And in the in this input, like uh, the cohomology theory is computed for for SPT, the cohomology theory is co computed on on the the classifying space of G. So in in the bosonic, the um, group cohomology case we consider like H D of B G of U one. That's the that's the bosonic classification. And, and for fermions, we use the cobaldism, but the speed is the same, that we do some cohomology theory on, on the classifying space. And the classifying, what, what is classifying space of, of group G? And okay, so that's some infinite dimensional topological space. And, and that's a good property that, the, that for any um, space-time manifold MD, the topological class of G backgrounds on on that space time is is in one to one correspondence to with the uh, the homotopy classes of maps from your space time to this infinite dimensional topological space. So that's the abstract uh, characterization of classifying space. So we can regard that. So in so we hope we often interested in some partial function of some theory or in, in multiple systems on, on manifold with the background. Okay, this is this is the G background. Okay, but but from this correspondence we can regard this background with some G connection. This is and uh, as some at this at the topological data is captured by um, the map from the space time to uh, the classifying the classifying space. Okay. So in a sense that um, this means that we. You, you can regard the theory with G symmetry coupled with the G symmetry background with G connection is in a sense a theory parameterized by the, the this classifying space. Okay. So in a sense that the so this background can it, in general, modulates all over the, the, the space time, and and the corresponding with this a prime some corresponding map from the into the classifying space is not the constant, which means that in you, you can regard the um, such map uh, creates some bundle of theories, and for each each. Each point of, of the space time corres corresponds to some um, uh, theory parameterized by, by a point of uh, classifying space. Okay, so this is some abstract point, view, viewpoint. Okay, but so, so this is some, uh, I mean, a kind of skewed viewpoint uh, about the uh, theory coupled with the background. Okay, but we can think think about a more natural situation. The natural, I mean, more not. Uh, I mean, we can think about the theory. We're coming with some ordinary 
parameters. Okay, like, well, like some mass of the particle or like any coupling in your Lagrangian or Hamiltonian or like uh, in particular, like if you have a topological term that might be a Thea angle, or blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the, that's also, that's a natural uh, family of theories we uh, often come up with that this, okay. And we can regard it as like um, minus one form symmetry. Okay, because these are generally scales, these are the scales, background scales. On the other hand, these connections are locally one forms. Okay. So, so there's an analog uh, of, if, if you try to get the analog from the, the usual SPT, uh, we, we, we might say that it's um, ordinary parameters can be thought as uh, the minus one form symmetry background. In, Okay. Okay. So then the question is that whether we can, I mean, um, okay. So, so for SPTs, there, there was a great success to think, think about the, the classification in, um, so can, can we do this the similar in the presence of the, this kind of more usual parameters that is minus one whole symmetry background. Okay. So here the P is some um, space of parameters. Okay. Then from the an analogy, the, the, what we expect is that such um, the invertible theory is parameterized by some space that in this case just probably some finite dimensional space is, is classified, computed by the same, the same generalized cohomology theory, namely the Anderson dual of, of, of corporism. Okay, so this, okay, so this is just by depressing the usual back, background, the topological class of, of I mean, the background G connection A by some modulated parameter. Um, which is a map from the space time to the, the space of parameters. Okay. So in, in, in this context, it's, so in, in, in the, the SPT, it was natural to think about uh, the uh, A connection, which is not constant, of course, that's, if it's constant, it's boring. So, so, but, so we studied the response to the, the modulated background. And in, 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 in this analogy that implies that um, if you have a parameters, then it would be interesting to study uh, the moderated parameter over the space time. Okay. Okay, so what we care about in this context is that some partial function on, on space time, um, but also depends on this moderated parameters, the phi, which is a map from space time to some space 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 parameters p. Okay, so so this p is uh, some um, uh, space of mass or coupling or theta. Okay. Yes, 
and this uh, this classification is going to be I mean very similar to the usual SPT story. So uh, it should contain the the free part that which is like z to some power. Okay, and that. Uh, gives us some um, uh, the in a sense a generalization of WZW term, the basis of the weekend term uh, consists of the this uh, modulated parameter phi. So this this continuously depends on on this modulated parameter. Okay, so so the it looks like for when the parameters I mean for for Usual, usual, usual uh, group group manifold target sigma model case. The, the, it looks like this. The double step for the term looks like this. On the other hand, it also contains a torsion part, and torsion part is kind of uh, I'm going to talk talk more about it. But it's kind of the discrete theta, and that that this part. Is depends on the homotopicus of of or the I mean topology topological class of phi. Okay, so in in the in the, the usual SPT, the SPT case the free part is like is usual case it's Chan Simons. Okay, so so Chan Simons term depends on on the con the continuously on on A, while the this discrete part, the torsion part, e, is again some discrete theta, and and depends on the topological part, that the topological classification of of the connection. So there there be a similar distinction. So any any questions so far? Everyone is happy. So I have a quick question here. So BG for, for finite for a discrete group G, BG is an infinite dimensional topological space. Yeah. Now a P should I think if I, if my system only have finitely many parameters, then P is finite dimensional? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, of course, to be precise, G is U1, the BG is finite dimensional. Right, right. And, and yes, and yes. So in this in this story, the P is going to be, or in most cases, P, P is going to be the, the finite dimensional. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so in, in the classification of SPT, people usually talk about the, I mean, general cohomology theory on infinite dimension typically infinite dimensional spaces but here it's also the desert uh, we began of course consider more I mean um, general cohomology theory on more usual um, manifold like SN mm -hmm. the spheres and there is a corresponding ph physics that that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. can I make a comment on that yes it's actually not so clear how we should interpret this bundle point of view for BG. For instance, if we just want to study quantum mechanics, we should say something like we're studying vector bundles over BG, and we want them to be the same as G representations. But it's just not true. There are more vector bundles on BG than there are G representations. Right. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yes, yes, th thank you for very, um informed comment yes i i'm obscuring the some detail like um homology theory on bg and the equivalent homology that's i yeah I, I don't i don't have a the crystallized understanding yes but, yeah so yeah, i think somehow everything works nicer if the parameter space is finite dimensional then you don't have to worry yes, otherwise yes. we should do things equivariantly yeah 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 Okay, so I mean, 
how, how is this framework? Uh, it will be relevant for the physicist. And okay, so I, I think there are three different but closely related applications in principle. Okay, and one is that, uh, I mean, stud studying it by itself as are the, as are the IR fate of, of the RG flow. So, so suppose that you have, you have family of UV system, which is um, not necessarily invertible, but, uh, but coming with well, parameters and, and everywhere, and, and may, maybe have a symmetry and everywhere gapped and short range interval, say. But then in IR, we, we would get some, the, I mean, naturally comes with the invertible theory with coupled with the par parameter. And okay, so if you do the other abiotic deformation of the system, okay, so I, I, I assume that every year in on parameter spaces, this UV system is every, every year gapped, so we can do a diabetic deformation and, and that gives us some, in general, some phase in front of the positron function and that generalizes the, the classical notion of Berry phase. Okay, and, okay, and in the closely related, we can also re regard this uh, invertible theory as an anomaly of a one dimensional lower theory. Okay, again, again, think about some UV system with the with parameter, with the parameter, and say P, then it might have some kind of anomaly or mixed anomaly with other symmetries. So for example, in principle, and so, okay, so in, in the usual story, the anomaly, the part of the anomaly of the symmetry is char uh, characterized by some anomaly polynomial so like it's in usual story, it can be like F2 cubed or some, some polynomial of the field strengths, okay? And the dimensions has to be like D plus two, okay? But if you have, if you have parameters, then you, you can contemplate some terms like uh, in, involving um, the, the D of P Okay, and th this kind of uh, polynomial, which is uh, not exact in, in globally. And that, that kind of, and, and this kind of anomaly uh, is, uh, is found in, in many contexts, but one, one is the uh, Cordova lamb with Zeba. So in this case, that if if um, if the UV system have an anomaly in involving some parameter, okay, then that means that um, that implies that you have a non-trivial non IR phase structure. Yeah, so if you have, if you have some parameters, but it involves anomaly which is, uh, that means that that's actually a boundary of invertible theory in one higher dimension. That means in the parameter space in now, there's non-trivial phase structure and, and there has to be some phase transition in the controlled manner. Okay. Yeah, I have a question here. Yep. Uh, so, so in this uh, anomaly picture, I think the, uh, there is both a uh, parameter space and the global symmetry. Yes, yes. Is it possible uh, uh, there is an anomaly if there is only parameter space with, with no symmetry? Yes, in principle, yes. If you have, um, I mean, at least you can contemplate that 
if there is a uh, enough number of um, the parameters, then you can like at least try to write down the anomaly polynomial, which uh, is the right degree and composed only of the uh -huh. The parameters. So yes, in, in principle, yes, I can I cannot give the um, the very good uh, example on, on top of my head, but in principle, yes. Okay, thanks. There's a few examples in our paper. If it... Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, Abano Figuero type. Yes. Uh, um, Okay, and the last one is that as we can treat that invertible theory as uh, depending on parameters as uh, the WZW term uh, of a dynamical system means that it is kind of gauging the parameter in, in this, I mean, one is just the invertible theory itself. So here gauging means that pro, just means that promote this background parameter, the parameter in, into a uh, dynamical field. Okay, so then we have, because we promote phi to be the dynamical, it, it's going to be a P target sigma model. Okay, then this generates cohomology theory, but if it is classifies the WZW term from the free part and discrete theta. And also the top from the torsion part. This is the free part, and this is the torsion. Okay. Yeah. And this framework was uh, useful to fit. I mean, to understand the correct quantization of WZW term actually. Um, so I'm not going to in, into the detail, but in my my paper with Yasunori Lee and Yuji Tachikawa. We talked. Um, now we use this framework to uh, understand the correct quantization of the WZW term, which, well, um, which was um, previously a bit confusing in the literature. Uh, I have a question here. Yep. When you say gauge the parameter, do you mean and you introduce this uh, sigma model? Is the the um, parameter space? Field dynamical. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it just means that to make the parameters the, this phi previously it's just a um, back modulated background parameters in is promoted into the a dynamical field. So now here, here we just do this. And you have to introduce a like a kinetic term also. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. So I'm I'm confused. Phi is the coupling, or is it classical or quantum? So in one and two, in in this context, uh, it, it's classical. But it, it's also useful to use this language of invertible theory or general cohomology, blah blah, to know that what what kind of term you can write down in this. Sigma model if if um, if the phi is dynamical, but you don't really use it as a dynamical field, do you? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's it's just classifying a term. It's we. I, I'm not. I'm not. 
So in what sense, analyzing any dynamics? Why can't you just say that phi is classical everywhere? Well, yes, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it just the motivation is a bit different. I mean, but yes, yeah, yeah doing, do, I mean, doing, doing this, the same thing in, in essence, yes. Thank you. Okay, so what time is it now? Okay, so th these are just um, relationship that we can study the family of impartive theory itself. It, on boundary, there can be, a, of course, the anomalous theory as usual, and we can gauge it. It means that promote the parameter space into the dynamical field, it, then it, it gives rise to the WZ w term that this is just about the term, no, not just the, okay. Okay, and in particular in this, in, in this context, we are interested in some P is some, in the case that P is some coset in, in the context of the WZW term. And this again, um, and WZW term first introduced to match the anomaly. So it's also comes as a boundary of, of uh, the usual uh, SPT phase. So that's the uh, picture. Okay, any other questions so far? Okay, so in, in this work or talk, we uh, I'm particularly interested in the example where the the invertible theory is coming from some multiple, possibly multiple free fermions. I should say that this is the massive free fermions. Okay, so, so if, if you have a free fermions, then of course we can, multiple free fermions, we have ma mass matrix M it lies in some Euclidean space. Okay. And these are my, so, so this mass matrix is going to be my parameters. Okay, and this, Capital N is some, um, um, the dimension of possible mass matrix. So for example, if it's 4D, then the mass, um, I mean, three plus one D, then the, ma the mass term looks like this and the possible mass matrix has to be the complex symmetric. So this capital N is e NF, if NF is the number of fermions, the, here the chi of fermions, then the this n is a dimension of a space of complex symmetric matrix, which is um, uh, this. Okay, but this this, this is not my uh, yes. Yes, Shamit. No, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, so yeah, so this is not my um, parameter space itself because because this uh, mass matrix can have, can degenerate or become some, some, in other words, some fermions can become gapless in some locus of, of this or N. So the precise, precise place depends on the dimensions. Some, some, some in some locus, the this mat the determinant of this matrix can be vanishes, and that su such locus is called the diabolic. Locus. Okay. 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 So then, in the IR, this 
uh, this massive free fermions deta uh, determines the, the family of invertible series parameterized by uh, P of R D. Okay. And so, so then the question is how, what class this kind of, this family of free fermions is in, in, in this generalized cohomology over, over P. So that's the question. Now, I, I should say that uh, of, this is, of course, already um, asked and studied in, in the Ryan et al. paper. Okay. Okay, but, um, but our, so we want to follow up uh, their paper by in, in a sense that we should be, we should give, uh, we would like to give some uh, very concrete, explicit way of computing it. And and formulate it, and also um, uh, precisely keep track of of the non non part of the part, not not just the WZW part. Okay. I have a question, actually. Yes. Um, I'm a little confused about the. Um, perspective. So the, the classification you're describing depends on a choice of P. Yes. Right, some choice of parameter space. And I guess the thing that bothers me is that different descriptions of um, uh, different descriptions may may suggest different parameter spaces. Meaning, like you know, some some other description of the same kind of system may allow me to add just like a few extra couplings, which are invisible in this description in terms of free fermions. And then the classification will be in terms of a different space. Do, do you see what I'm worried about? E, yes. Um, so, so then I couldn't one, compare those two. So one good one good property of, of this kind of generalized cohomology is that the, actually this uh, classification depends only on the homotopy. Uh, a homotopy class of, of space P. So you, if, if you just add some um, trivial system and trivial system with, with the trivial kind of par parameters, then it does nothing. And yeah, that helps. Yeah. Okay, so one uh, one motivation to think about it is that so in in for usual SPT and so there's a class of SPTs coming from the fermion coupled to massive fermion coupled to um, the symmetry, okay, and okay, so that defines. Uh, some element in in this generalized cohomology theory, precisely the chaos theory, and and such element is called the eta invariant. Okay? So that's the well studied uh, object in both in uh, the high energy physics and and mass. Okay, so the rough definition is I'm going to talk about, talk more about it. Is like Yeah, so so it's the IR of, of the massive fermion. So we, we can just start from the the, the fermion partial function, uh, defined on some space time with, coupled with some background, and and this quotation mark means that you do some regularization, otherwise it, it diverges. Okay, then take take the your mass to be infinite, which is Essentially, the IL. Okay. Then it's phase. So this is it's phase. So just taking a phase. 
is can be written as formally written as the sum over the sign of the eigenvalue. This eigenvalue of the Dirac, Dirac operator you are talking about. This is like a, I mean, usual Dirac plus the connection. Yeah, so so naturally we we expect that there should be some we we expect that uh, some some object that uh, corresponds to uh, the fermion massive fermion with the moderated mass and that we would call uh, the yeta term I'm not sure that I, I can call it the yeta invariant in in a good sense. So here I call it the Yeta term. Okay. Okay. Again, again, so our focus is that how to compute, to calculate this Yeta term or like the analog of index theorem. Uh, and in, in, in particular, how to capture the torsion part. part of it. Hmm. Yes, so more concrete example is that one plus one is the free fer free Dirac fermion psi, and this is of course already talked in, in detail by uh, Ryan, Ryan and others. Okay, so it's just the Lagrangian is just this that fermion with the, the, the usual mass term, okay, and I call I call the, the complex combination of M and M2 uh, as M, and this is my parameters, divin C, which is of course is the R2, okay, and in, in IL, we, this, this defines the family of invertible series when mass is non-zero. So that here the diabolic locus is just a point. Okay. Other, otherwise the the fermion the Dirac fermion is massive. Okay. So the parameter space is R2 excised this origin. Okay. And And the RG flow is of course like like this that um, flows flows towards infinity. And in other words, the this IR theory are the same, exactly the same. If if this mass is just differ by the positive real number. Okay. So in, in other words, this uh, this this R plus divisor of freedom does, does not matter. So, so we only care in, in only, in, we only care about this uh, angle in this space. So in in the, the algebraic topology term this space is homotopic to S1. Okay. So so this defines the invertible QFT parameterized by this uh, circle.
Tantaro, sorry to interrupt, but I think the time is almost up. So maybe if you can take five minutes to oh, sorry, I... summarize the results. Yes, yes, yes. I, so I, I was confused about the, the there's a oh, point, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm... We actually have an afterward discussion, so you can... Well, I, I, I wrap it up, sorry, in five minutes. Yes. Okay. okay. So nice. I'm so sorry. I was too, too slow. Okay, so let me think. Right, so so then, so in, in a sense, it did this invertible theory should define some partial function depends on your mass, modulated mass. Okay, so so to precisely define it, um, we have to regularize these fermions, and and we do that from in a sense just a power reverse regularization. Okay, so which means that we take our family of invertible theory and also take another family, which is actually not a family and just a constant theory with a constant mass. Okay, okay then, then we define this partial function of our invertible theory as like partial function of the modulated mass and partial function with the With a constant mass, okay, okay, and in this example, I I'm talking about some particular background, which is the space-time is two-dimensional um, torus with with a particular spin structure, and I make this mass wind wind once in in one direction, this ns direction, okay, okay. and then finally we take the the Mass goes to infinity limit. Okay, so so this is a cartoon that mass winds around in, on on S one in, in one of the S one uh, the torus cycle. Okay. 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 So one way to compute this is by spectral flow. So I I further interpret this. Uh, mass, the constant mass to the winding mass by starting from the constant mass and move towards the diabolic point, the, the origin, and then going to origin, we, we enlarge the, the winding. So that's some interpolation. Okay, so Okay. So then we, if we, so that's this family of the theories. And if, if we reduce, I mean, if, if, if I regard one, one, this winding, the circle that mass winds to be the, the KK circle and we reduce, I define some zero plus one D system that coming from, from this con mass configuration. Okay, and this consists of some KK fermions. Some, okay, and, and this KK mass is just uh, so is give, given by just solving the classical Dirac equation. Okay. And and it, it's solvable. This is a simple system, even, even with the binding mass. And from, from this deformation process. So t equals zero is just a constant m zero, and then I deform that mass goes to constant and uh, keep constant and close to the origin, and then then the mass starts to wind around the, the circle. Okay. And the KK mass looks like this. Okay, so. The point is that so the purple is the double is doubly degenerate. Okay. Double degenerate. And so sorry. And the red line is a that single. The point is that there is one point uh, that this KK mass crosses 
d zero. This is of course zero. Zero. Okay. And in the energy spectrum, what happens is that there is a there's a point that energy spectrum degenerates. That precisely here. It's here. And this is a kind of the, the pump that the fermion number is pumped. Okay. And from this computation, we can uh, say that th this defined partition function as a, just a defined as the ratio of fermion partition function is precisely minus one. And this sign is important. It's not positive, this is negative. And it means that it's a, it consists, consists of zeta class. Okay. And in, in the language of the general cohomology theory, there's ab abstract mass sets that the degree two generates cohomology on S1 is the same as degree one generates cohomology on point, and which in this case is again Z2. And this, this map is precisely the S1 compactification. Okay. Okay, so, so this minus one is what we expect. Here, here we did, did not impose the, the U1 symmetry. If we impose the U1 symmetry, then of course um, we get this Z2 class is promoted into Z. I don't have time. Okay, so I skip the last part, sorry. Um, but, but further, um, we can argue that there would be a, a gen generalization of APS theorem like this. This kind of partial function can be uh, decomposed into the double z double term and integer. Sorry, I don't have a term. No. Okay. And this non portability part can be captured from by going the lower dimension by the compactification. Okay, so Okay, so I, I'm so sorry about the poor time management. Um, yeah, but the, my message was that, well, this is not uh, my finding, but the classification of the family of invertible theories or the synonym of gapped short range and uncle phase are captured by the, again, I mean, the general cohomology theory, which is the cobalism theory, um, the, same, the same one that uh, successfully classified the, the SPT phase. And for massive fermion, this um, invertible theories are detected by the ratio of the, the fermion partial functions. So the, the denominator is basically just the Pauli Villas regulator. Okay, and uh, I didn't have a time to explain, but the, there will be a generalization of APS index theorem for, for the, for in the case that we involve the modulated mass. Okay, so I'm so sorry about the, uh, spending over time, but stop here and take any questions. All right, thank you, Kantaro. Uh, may I have a quick question? So can you sure. scroll up maybe two pages, two slides earlier? Yeah. Oh, uh, right here, yeah. What is that tilde above? Oh yeah, sorry, I. this is just a, I mean, to make the mathematical statement correct, this is reduced uh, cohomology. So in invertible or in any cohomology theory, it's like on X, it's like there's a splitting like this. So this is like the pure gravitational. Mm. Invertible theory. It's like the just uh, 
gravitational channel Simon theory. Yeah. And, and okay. so that's not we are, we are mm. interested in. And we, what we are interested in is the other part. I see. Uh, any other question for Kantaro? I, I have a technical question. Uh, yes. Sorry if this is misguided, but uh, it seems like when, when this mass matrix is modulated in space, then your Dirac operator like D plus M is not in general Hermitian. So does that make evaluating the determinant or the Fafin more, more difficult? I mean, usually like in the usual, uh, uh, Calculation yeah. with both of them, you just like look at the eigenvalues of d, uh, d slash, and the, the, you're done. And it's a Hermitian operator. But here it's not Hermitian, so I don't know how to actually evaluate. Yes, yes. So, in great question. And in general, with the moderated mass, we, uh, yes, we, we cannot uh, say some, something nice, as, as nice as the usual case. And we have to refer to. As far as my knowledge, we have to refer to the the eigenfunction itself. To, to, and to, and to, okay, to. so let me. Can I can I explain that? Sorry. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can I connect? Yeah. Yeah. On yeah, that? yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah, when when we have the modulated mass term, the uh, as I said, the Dirac operator is uh, not our mission. So the partition function cannot be um, represented by the determinant of the Dirac operator. That, uh, that expression is not valid anymore in that case. But we can still uh, do some other thing. Like we can define, for instance, d dagger d and d d dagger. They are uh, Hermitian operators, and then using the eigenfunctions of these two operators. Uh, there is a method introduced by Hushikawa. Uh, we can put all the uh, information into the Jacobian using those eigenfunctions. And yeah, so there is a way, but it will be more involved. Yes. Thanks, Ichu. And, and the method you said is introduced by, by, by whom I didn't catch? Uh, Hushikawa. Hushikawa, who did the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, best integral measure, yes. Yeah, we, we can use the 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 old fashioned Fujikawa method, but the but the final expression will be more complicated. Thank you. Yeah. I have, I have a question. <clears throat> in uh in higher dimensions, uh, how how do you choose what to compactify on, or does it not matter? Like, for example, in two dimensions, I could think about compactifying on a torus or a sphere or something. Uh, does that, should that make a difference? So, yeah, so to detect the invertible, um, to, de to detect the, the invertible phase, we have to come up with some nice uh, space and background, depend depends on the system. And yeah, so it, it, it's a month to find some dual um, configuration of the, the manifold with, with, with the parameters that's, that represents uh, some uh, Bordism class in, in the, in the Bordism theory. That's what, yeah, so in, gen, in general, I mean, it, it's not the, uh, yeah, it, yeah, in, in uh, this this particular example, it's, it's easy that just this one. But in in general, it can be complicated. Yes. I see. So you're saying it depends on the the field configuration or the the background field configuration that you choose. That's what determines what what. Um, what depends. Yeah, it depends on first depends on p. The what what to I mean the parameter space. The what to look at and and right. then then you. I mean, you you want to find some cycle. I mean, you you want to find some non-trivial map from your ma space-time manifold to your p. So, so so that so that de determines that what what kind of manifold you want to think about. I see. Okay. Thanks.
can I ask, uh, uh, what is the, um, is there like a general form for this WZW term? Can you quickly tell us what it looks like? Say if you take the space of all mass parameters, which I guess is some kind of Grassmannian, or how do you think Yeah, I don't, it? I don't have a, I mean, very general formula right now. So yeah, I, it's, mm -hmm. he, here, here, I mean, just, just with the, yeah, I mean, as you guys did, um, this, this is kind of the continuous part, so it, it, it can be captured, but I, I don't have, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't have a, a, I mean, closed form right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. It seems like it's the sort of thing that should have a universal form, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a, some, uh, something that's talked about, I mean, in, in the uh, clay, clay hotat freed naughty paper that uh, which is the I mean Atias Singer index theorem for the higher as uh, the super connections and there will mm -hmm. be that will be I mean yeah probably it is yeah, just yeah, yeah it is just the yeah wow. yes, yes yes okay thanks all right um any other question? All right, if not, uh, let's thank Kantaro again. Thank, thank you, and sorry, thank you. No, no problem, yeah. <laughs> and I think we can move to the gather. Gather the tongue, yes. For the discussion. All right, all right, thank you everyone. I'll stop the recording. Thanks.